Friday. Today we have a um, another fabulous artist. Today with us is Sanjay. Sanjay is from Pune, India. Um, I was lucky to see Anj uh, Sanjay at a um, small farm where there was painting going on and then meet him later at his um, apartment in Pune. So we looked at uh, Sanjay's colors yesterday. Um, if you have questions, please ask them. Uh, and with that, Sanjay, welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And so we'd like to see your slideshow and perhaps you Thank could you. Um, Thank you. tell us about what we're looking at. Sure. Or would you like me to introduce? Let's put yeah, the other my, camera my on the spotlight. Just a moment, please, Sanjay. There you yeah. go. Okay. Okay, so I am, uh, my name is Sanjay Desai. I am from Pune, India. I've been uh, painting since I was a child, but uh, I've never been uh, trained as an artist. I am an engineer by education and I retired uh, uh, six, seven years back and now I'm a full-time artist. So uh, I have uh, I have not had any uh, big uh, guru or uh, inspiration. However, uh, fortunately, when I was very young, I was uh, in the company of some great artists, uh, not only painters, but uh, we used to have a couple of classical musicians staying near our place. There are writers staying near me. And Milin's dad was a great artist and we were allowed in his studio. So I got my inspiration from them. And I paint every day now. I travel a lot. I, had, I was fortunate to travel all over the place and gather a lot of references. And I, I would love to show you my demo today. All right. So that's it. If you have any questions, uh, please, please go ahead. And I suppose we can proceed with sharing of Sanjay's artworks now. Yeah. Okay. Are you seeing this, Sanjay? Yes, yes, I can okay. see. Yeah. So. Uh, this one is, uh, is a place uh, in 200 kilometers from here. See, basically I see there are two, two kinds of painting I tend to draw. I'm, I, there are some paintings which, are, uh, which have to be drawn with a very specific strategy. And there are some paintings which are drawn uh, with, uh, with instinct uh, very fast. So this one involves some... Sorry. Uh, go ahead, Sanjay. Yeah. So basically, this, these are not uh, very formal uh, decisions. But once I start painting, it either goes in a very strategic way, it slows down, and otherwise, it goes in a fast uh, way, and it becomes very instinctive. So this one is somewhere in the middle. And uh, uh, basically, uh, being an Indian, I like to paint uh, what is there around me. So India is a very colorful and cluttered country. So oh. I tried to uh, kind of use the rule that, you know, you should simplify and uh, two or three big shapes. And that didn't uh, seem to work for the Indian uh, landscape. So I decided that I needed to uh, kind of uh, master the clutter. So this is one of the examples. Beautiful. Okay. So this is this is a main road in my city. I like the I like the shadow pattern. And so basically, what I do is I don't. Um, I actually end up uh, shooting at least. 20, 30 photographs every time I go out on my bike um, for buying material or we have a small kind of a pub where all the artists uh, collect. 
but whenever i see something like this i stop by i take a photograph and then i go home and uh, paint so this is one of such uh, you know instinctive moments which where i thought uh, and this is a classic instinctive painting not very strategic uh, just it just started and uh, went at a constant speed and it got finished so this is one this is another instinctive painting this is uh, this is a backwaters and i wanted to keep it as simple as possible uh, this is a similar season right now it is this season in india this was done last year this is the result of uh, lockdown i had no we could not go out so i started painting what was there inside the house and this is uh, my terrace where i usually sit uh, and read uh, newspaper in the morning so i saw this and i thought it was interesting this is a very typical uh, puneite that's why I, i invite all watercolor artists to come to pune this is uh, these are about 100 to 200 300 year old uh, uh, designed houses which are slowly vanishing and this is one of the one of those houses so in effect uh, watercolor artists in pune have become kind of a record keepers of those old places which are now crumbling Sanjay, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of oranges and blues. Uh, yeah. Which orange and blue do you, you tend to use? I see on your dot card you have three different blues. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it is. We lost your sound. San Sanjay, um, the microphone is on mute. <clears throat> yeah, that camera. Oh, okay. So I use uh, ultramarine and cobalt mainly, and I use uh, Prussian blues only to make uh, some purples and violets. Uh, of course, there are extreme circumstances, uh, wet scenes and wet on wet. where uh, sometimes uh, prussian blue i tend to use but basically it is ultramarine and uh, ultramarine and cobalt and the orange is quinburn orange or is there another mixture you make the this orange? is these are uh, these are uh, this italian burnt sienna is there and i i mix uh, either orange or indian yellow a little bit to give it a little bit of a glow thank you this is uh, from our uh, kota kota visit rajasthan uh, this is a place called bundi paradise for uh, watercolor artists and a number of workshops happening there this is very close to jaipur and wonderful weather i don't uh, i don't know whether angela was there uh, but a lot of other people were. anna was there darius was there and lot of other people were there we had a lot of fun there <clears throat> that's the um, end of the artwork sample artworks okay yeah and we're okay. just sharing this uh, slide sanjay for our guests to take note we want them to check you and be inspired yes. via your socials uh, for instagram we have sanjay this is his account and of course also in facebook and you may also check sanjay's um, website we've been informed that sanjay is going to have a workshop i'm um, not workshop um, a solo exhibition happening on december 22 to january 2 you want to share a bit about the upcoming solo exhibition yeah these are you know uh, 
I am exhibiting uh, about 35 paintings, uh, which were done during uh, during this last year, and um, so the gallery wanted me to exhibit uh, work. So they came home, and I could not believe when they when I pulled out all my paintings. I had done around 350 paintings in the last uh, last about uh, 16 months. Uh, which were worth showing. So this they selected 35, and these are basically uh, Indian city scenes. A few of them are from uh, from area around Pune, uh, and there is also they have arranged a one day outdoor workshop because the weather is nice. They have a nice uh, uh, nice uh, rest. Uh, kind of a resort on the on the waterfront mm -hmm. so we'll be there are about 30 people will be going there for a for a workshop one day workshop any online workshops coming up uh, not, nothing online but we are planning a number of uh, workshops first is i'll be going to delhi for iws binale amit has invited me and then there are uh, workshops being planned in uh, Manali, which is a which is a place in the mountain. Uh, could be snow during uh, end of February. There is one being planned in Delhi and another being planned in uh, Jaisalmer or Jodhpur in Rajasthan. So three or four uh, physical workshops being planned. Uh, let's see that the Delhi one is uh, for sure. The others are, other ones are also, people are keen, but we are just waiting for the COVID situation, especially the new variant to unfold. Hopefully, till now, there is no bad news. So we are hoping that they will happen in the month of January, February, and March. That's the end of the slide, uh, John. Yes. So Sanjay, would you like to start your demonstration? I'm gonna make sure you give sure. enough time. And is it okay, okay if we ask you questions during your painting? Yes. Okay. Can I can I show around my studio yes. for yes. just a minute? Yes. And I'll finish it in a minute. Okay. So it's 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 a small, it's not like big deal to call it a studio, and it is being completely reorganized, but this is this is where I work uh, every day. Oh, wow. I spend a lot of time here. And uh, I wanted to show you my palettes. So what I do is I keep uh, a number of palettes ready. So once one painting is finished, uh, I can start another painting without waiting to clean it up. I have a number of such uh, containers ready. I have all the brush sets. I have a number of brush sets. So I can just shift from one painting to another very quickly. Um, I use uh, this Bohan, uh, Kansan. I use whatever, I mean, I'm not very particular about uh, my... I, in, in fact, I tend to shift from one paper to another uh, every few months. So this is the one I did uh, last week uh, in, in Jharkhand. <clears throat> So I am an avid collector of books. So you can see here, there are, there are a few books on Sargent, uh, Winslow, Homer, Andrew Veth, and of course, Joseph and uh, um, Alvaro is there. Uh, and there are some Indian great artists, Gaitonde is there, SM Pandit is there. So I read a lot. There are a few books stuck in, um, U.S. John Pike books I had bought. This is a this is a Roberto Zangarelli I bought in Italy. This is a Milin Mulix uh, painting I bought. So I collect. Uh, I also collect artworks, uh, whatever I can afford. And this is my place. And uh, this is one sculpture I bought from a very famous artist here. Uh, a mother and child reading a book. Uh, this is also another famous artist, Anwar Hussain. This is Anwar Hussain. 
and uh, so everywhere my house is now full of paintings this one will be collected by somebody and this is a 100 year old uh, uh, lithograph by a very famous artist made with this stone plates so this is uh, where i stay and i work and uh, now let us get and this is this one is by milin's uh, father milin mulik's father oh, wow. so he was a great artist he, he did a lot of these uh, uh, indian epic uh, paintings from indian epics and this is a small one uh, he used to do 8 feet and big ones so shall i start uh, my arto uh, demo yes please yeah. thank you for thank the thank you tour. for the tour thank you for the tour yes and i'm going to paint uh, by the way i'm going to paint this uh, this scene which i which we visited last week in jharkhand in uh, about 200 kilometers from uh, pravin karmakar's uh, place it was a tribal village and uh, they have very the water table is quite high so every village and every locality has its own pond and they grow fish their own fish there uh, they use very natural earthy colors uh but since we have <clears throat> uh, we don't have so much time so i am going to uh, use a very fast way of doing it and let us see where this goes please ask me whatever you want to you know sanjay no how problem. do you do the uh, how do you do the wires like the telephone wires how do you get those really beautiful fine lines sorry how do you get the fine lines of for example the telephone wires in some of your paintings so i have uh, i have very fine brushes very fine brushes which has possibly have a few hairs that's all but uh, basically you do it very confidently and very fast and you hope that it works <laughs> right uh, also nowadays uh, you can use a knife to do it on the wet uh, on the wet surface if you do a knife the color gets dragged a little bit and a very fine uh, fine line can be drawn oh beautiful okay so i'm i'm using if anybody has any questions please so for those of you on zoom you can ask sanjay directly sanjay uh do you have uh like uh three favorite brushes you like to use in every painting yes i think one of my most favorite uh, brushes is the perla which angela gifted me for the first time and i fell in love with uh, the brushes <laughs> and uh, there is there is this uh, brush called rosemary i don't know whether they are available with you fantastic brushes what, what size are those brushes sanjay this is uh, this is a size 12 so around 8 mm and uh -huh. i use the uh, i use three sizes of these brushes and uh, otherwise my my brushes are pretty not very costly i use one of these brushes this is also very nice brush see what happens is when i when i take the water out from here out from the water then it stays like this 
<laughs> so when i pick up color and i rub it then it there is a very nice dry brush kind of uh, effect and uh, because it moves parallel to the parallel, parallel to the surface true. of the so i find this very useful otherwise simple uh, normal this uh, brushes but you uh, like, i always yeah you like escoda yeah yeah perlas are escoda of course escoda perlas are there what was and the flat I, brush I, no the flat brush is a local brush um flat brush is a local brush i have i also have i think too many brushes i have uh, i have this very expensive thing series 7 winsor and newton uh, but basically i rely on three perlas and three rosemary and some flat brushes does your local brush uh company have a website so that we can all be uh patronizing them i think rosemary is not a local brush rosemary is a korean brush but i can i can share the details with you <clears throat> rosemary yeah, is a british is a british brand it's perfect uh, no many times more than the the quality of the hair i find that the stiffness is more important for me and these brushes have perfect combination of stiffness and uh, uh, stiffness and uh, see and these were given to me by the daniel smith uh, dealer uh, in india tarun has given this one you mentioned that it's about stiffness of the brush is it also about the amount of water that the correct. the barrel holds correct correct so the softer the brush <clears throat> it holds far more water than pigment and uh, then i i don't i don't i don't like that uh, unless it is a wash otherwise and this uh, the perlas are pretty stiff brushes so when you want to do dry brush work and uh, also some semi dry these are perfect brushes for me uh, i agree and is your board at an angle yeah uh, my board is at an angle but uh, <clears throat> i can do vertical but weight on weight generally i do almost horizontal because the water starts flowing in general do you do wet on wet or wet into dry no uh, i i i don't do so much wet into wet i uh, i do wet into dry um and because in india we have bright uh, sun yes. um we have bright sun so the shadows are pretty sharp and that's why uh, i need to have uh, dryness a little bit of dryness in the paper so the whole point is that it can uh, you can uh, make a painting look good but for me uh, it is important that it really conveys uh that atmosphere and in india the i the way i like to paint sunny pictures uh, the shadows are sharp so i would like to keep it dry painting so this was in is a raphael uh, flat brush i like this <coughs> basically because 
they have a raphael flat with short hair i find that very useful many times the flat brushes have long hair and i don't somehow i don't it's not suitable for my my work so basically i am uh, what i am doing is i keep on uh, balancing i see blue here i see a bit of blue here blue here sanjay i think your son is, is in the room as well he he left a comment there about a cat <laughs> ah. <laughs> cat right Akash. he he's in us he's right. in us so and he's he's in zoom he's with us Oh okay, okay. He said dad you need to mention the cat. She's an important part of the studio. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the cat is a very important part. She is my guardian angel I say. Sanjay, so this is that the alizarin? Sorry? Is the color for your roof is that the alizarin? This is alizarin, and uh, the roof is alizarin. Plus, I always mix it with a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay. I uh, unless it is specifically uh, specific requirement of crimson, I add a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to it. And it's also if you see here, there is a little bit of variation from brown to pink. Yes. it somehow i don't know why even if you mix it it separates out and it looks good sanjay how long does it take you to do a a, a painting i know there's lots of pieces to that but in general uh, uh, very even if it is a very complex piece i usually my patience wears wears out in one and a half two hours wow impressive it's very only way, very complex uh, paintings i do it overnight but otherwise i like to finish a painting when i start it so you start one finish one before the next one uh yes in terms of painting so what i do is when it is uh, sometimes it takes uh, drying uh, takes time then i switch to sketching okay so i i switch to pencil sketching or even color sketching till the painting is drying but i never usually i don't uh, start two major paintings uh, at a time May I ask what green this is? This is uh, olive green, and I have mixed a little bit of cobalt uh, to it. So I have basically it's a olive green, and I have added. Uh, I have kept uh, yellow ochre on one side and ultramarine on the other side, so I can create a warm and cool of olive green. I like the way you think. Sandra, are you using uh, rough or cold pressed paper? This is a cold pressed uh, bohang, but it is uh, actually cold pressed bohang is uh, rough enough. I don't know if you're going to do it today but I saw within your dot card that you used titanium white 
What would you yes. use the titanium white for? What would, what is it? Uh, well, actually it's for highlights. And uh, frankly speaking, I am, uh, uh, I am a bit, uh, I get a bit bored with doing uh, very narrow or very detailed uh, negative spaces. So I actually use titanium white and uh, do the uh, negative spaces with titanium white and sometimes I use a little bit of pink, orange. I can make a little bit of op opaque, uh, opaque color. I also use it, I don't use uh, gouache. So I use titanium white for that. Sanjay, do you, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the ivory black or the lunar black? Uh, I use ivory black, but I use the neutral tint much more. Is it because of the granulation? Uh, I don't know. Ivory black, uh, it seems to leave, a, I don't know, a residue or something, which is visible possibly only to me. But uh, when I use uh, neutral tint, I can create a warm and cool uh, neutral color much more easily using neutral tint and it is uh, and it is dark enough so thank you, you What is your favorite size to paint? Well, uh, it uh, presently it, it keeps on changing, frankly. But presently, I prefer uh, a smaller size, which is twelve by sixteen. Uh, Thank you. Twelve by sixteen. And I also use fourteen by nineteen. But lately, I have. I am a bit uh, uncomfortable with the half size because it's a lot horizontal. This is much more uh, kind of closer to what I prefer, which is uh, better for, uh, you know, it's close to the golden ratio. For some of those that don't know what the golden ratio, could you explain that? So, uh, golden ratio is a is a ratio being available in the in the nature as well as used by right from a thousand years ago to all the masters, and there is a certain proportion of a rectangular which is uh, very comfortable and pleasing aesthetically to human eyes. So it's one, one is to 1.612 or something. So all, all the great, all the great artists uh, paintings and the structures of rectangular structures you see, when they are in that ratio, they look very good. You're right from Taj Mahal to some 
leaf or they say that uh, this to this is a golden ratio and this to this is a golden ratio so a golden ratio is everywhere you can search for it in on youtube uh, but it really works and i find it uh, very interesting that was a great explanation Sanjay, what did you start painting? I started when I was in school. Um, I started when I was in school, uh, I think sixth or seventh standard. As I said, uh, Pune had a great tradition of uh, artists. And in those days, if you go anywhere uh, in... Uh, on, uh, on, on weekends, you could see artists sitting there. And as I said, uh, Milind was there, his dad was there. So I got attracted to it. But I never had any formal education. So Clarissa asked a question. She asked, has your style always been a very loose style? No. I, I actually, I don't I keep, I try to keep away from styles. Uh, I, I draw, I draw as per my instinct. I'm doing this just because we have, we don't have so much time. But sometimes uh, when the, when the picture is complicated, then you have to pay attention and do a little bit uh, more in detail, spend a lot of time. But of course my attempt is not to be very accurate. I have to be, uh, I can't be accurate. I don't want to be accurate. Sanjay, would you be, yeah. Sanjay, Please. would you be willing to talk about how you choose the subject and the emotional connection between the image and your decision? Yes. So uh, I, uh, when I started painting uh, again, by the way, I, I left, uh, I, I, I became an engineer by profession. I have always been a design engineer. So I designed engines, production shops, R&D facilities and everything. And in up to 1994, I had number of exhibitions and everything. Uh, I was 23 then. I 23, right? 30, 30, 30, 30 33. And then uh, my career took off. I had to stop painting. I was working very hard, traveling all over the place. <clears throat> then I started painting again. In uh, 2013, 14. 14, I left my job and I said I wanted to go back. And it's, a, it's another story. So, and then I... As usual, I started painting everything under the sun, the boat, and then I was painting, sitting in Pune, I was painting boats, I was painting Venice, I was painting Rome, and I was painting Himalayas. And I got a little bit, uh, you know, what, what was I doing? And then I had the opportunity to go to Venice. Three, four times I went to Italy. And it felt much better painting Venice when I was in Venice. So when I came back to India, I thought that uh, it is very important to have a cultural uh, connect with your environment uh, of the subject that I paint. And that's why I, I paint where I am. And nowadays I am painting, uh, painting Indian cities. And I am an urban man. I have been born, brought up in a city. So I paint cities. And uh, that's how it is. Uh, there, there, I, I believe there has to be a there has to be a cultural connect. Unless it is there, it is just a picture. And it's all right uh, to paint as a practice if you want to learn certain techniques and use on certain you know text and techniques, textures and the graphic effects and everything. You can choose any subject. But I see no point. I, I stay 200 kilometers from sea. 
I, I can't be painting boats every day, right? I, I felt odd. So uh, I thought I will paint my own city. And then I found fantastic subjects in my own city. And I was, I felt like a fool. What was I doing? I hope I have answered your question. Sanjay, do you prefer, prefer painting in the studio or plein air? I do both. I do both. But I'm not very kind of uh, finicky about, uh, no, no, I have to do plein air and I can't do this. And whenever I get a chance, I paint. And I have observed that, uh, in fact, uh, in my city, it is so it is crowded. Um, in the in the summer, you can't go out. It is 40, 42 degrees in the after right from 10 o'clock to 4, 4 30. It is extremely hot in the rainy season. It rains. So I basically I get only a few months to do uh, plain air. Uh, and another thing is that there is a lot of clutter. So when I did plain air, I, I observed that I was choosing a better spot for sitting down and painting rather than the best spot for composition. So I thought, why not just spend a lot of time in that place, observe, I take uh, 10, 15 photograph of the, uh, photographs of a place which, which I like, uh, and then come home and then do a lot of sketching Sometimes it is there, sometimes it's not there. Many times it has happened that I go and see a subject and then I have to track the sun. And uh, I, then I find out that uh, this, this place is going to look better in the evening. So I come back in the evening when the light is right. And then I take photographs. Sometimes I do sketching, but I'm not very finicky about any approach. As far as you know, I, I I have to, I need to paint, and uh, that's the most important thing. Whether I do plain air or I don't mind, but I always paint from my own photographs, and I spend a lot lot of time taking taking uh, photographs. Um, I take multiple photographs. I organize them. And sometimes I make changes. I decide I want uh, this to go. I want to add something. And so that's how I, I do it. So Lauren was just on Lauren McCracken. and he said you should you should you should try Lauren McCrack in black. Sorry, sorry. Lauren McCracken was just done. He said, you should try Lauren McCracken Black. OK. <laughs> That's another thing, John. You know, what, I've, what I want to do now is that I want to do certain purely experimental paintings, which are not, which are not landscapes. I think. A natural, uh, my tendency, natural tendency is going to take me towards abstraction okay. one day or the other. And uh, when I see Daniel Smith, uh, these color cards and the granulations and these are metallic colors, and I find that I should be doing purely experimental uh, paintings, which I will be doing and then, and then I will show it to you. Let's see. Oh, I'd love, to, love to see them. We would love to see them. I can I can see myself going uh, abstract someday. I can't help it, and I don't force myself uh, to stay one way or the other. Uh, I just go with the flow. Sanjay, do you always paint from uh, back to front, uh, background, middle ground, foreground? Not 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 really, but. Uh, <clears throat> 
I I go from uh, typically what ends up you know I plan one thing but actually something different happens. That is I plan to go from uh, faint value to higher and higher value, but I end up doing value number very you know very light wash, then wash number two. Then I do the darkest, and then I I I I, under, I I think I get a feel of the width of the uh, the range of values, and then I push in the third value below the dark. Somehow the the, the second last value I end up putting uh, the last. This is. basically because maybe i don't judge the values so correctly that may be happening very nice sanja do you have any um examples of your abstract and if so can you post them so we can look at them later on facebook sure is they are not i mean I, i what i did i did a lot of oil work uh, pretty large format 3 by 3 by 3 and everything and uh, they they are not they are abstract expressionist you can call them uh, and so i have one here the old one dusty ones hey it's a kind of bapun sir so this is one i did this is an oil this is 25 30 years old um, another one i'll show you but i i'll i'll surely post uh... sanjay roberts asking um what what series of of your, is um your rosemary brush These are uh, series three, four, four. There you go. Thank you. So I, I'll just show you how how nicely they work. So you have very, and then I can do very thin. You can see here very thin, nice calligraphy with the same brush, and I can do uh, broad also with them. So that's that's why I like them. Okay. Sanjay, a question that was asked is, how do you prefer to mix your greens? <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm comfortable with the available greens. I I don't know. Some people don't like uh, the available greens. They mix blues and yellows. I do that, but I'm pretty comfortable with the greens that are available in the tubes. I'm I'm okay with that. I agree, Sanjay. Daniel Smith makes some great greens. Yes, yes, yes. I can, I can, I can. Uh, I mean, low quality greens end up being very dirty, opaque, and characterless. So you need excellent quality greens in the tubes. Otherwise, it is better to mix with uh, blues and yellows. Uh, but I, I am not. I am comfortable using greens from tubes. Daniel Smith greens. So I'll just speed this up a little bit. Lo voy a mojar un poco.
So I'll go a little bit. Wow. This is the only detail work. Este es el único detalle que voy a hacer en los tejados. Esto. Sanjay, do you use other things like uh, for es scraping or other tools that you find in a, a hardware store or a spray bottle? Uh, una spray o alguna cosa. Uh, Angela? Yes? Now we could hear the translation. Uh, credit card? <laughs> I use uh, knives. Mm -hmm. I use all sorts of things. Thank you. Exciting. Are you are you willing to share to share a couple examples of the more unusual tools that you use? Uh, sorry. Are you willing to share some examples or to show us on the video some of the more unusual tools that you use or maybe even how you use the credit card as a- I'll, I'll, I'll use it on this. I'll use it on this. Thanks. Uh, that's another thing. Usually the rough papers are not so conducive to uh, use of these tools, but somehow, uh, Bohang has managed and it's very convenient. So, so you can just use a spray once or twice and then the tools can be used even on a dry painting. What color are you using for the small detail on the roof? It's uh, burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine. I think so. There's a little bit of crimson also. Wow, I just it just came together just so quick just now. The cat must have came into the room. <laughs> so now I'll show you. So the knife, I can use it like this. I use a spray and then I... San Sanjay, sorry, but the camera is covered by, slightly covered by, by your head just now. Okay. okay. You have to do it again. I'll show you. Yeah. I'll show you. So this, this. Yeah. This way I can slash and uh, but I sprayed it uh, two sprays and I can so for example I have spray here then it comes like this that's how I do it or if you want I can on here Is the credit card metal or plastic? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's plastic. It's plastic. But that, uh, uh, that's, that's the beauty of Bohang paper. That it, uh, this does not happen on a rough uh, arches somehow. So. 
Sanjay, you need to, to focus. focus your camera. So Sanjay, we're going to run out of time because uh, you've been so, I, I, I finish it quickly you've been so fantastic about answering questions. It's been uh, it's been absolutely wonderful. For those of you on Zoom, as Sanjay is kind of finishing up, would you like to ask questions? Please go ahead. And then Sanjay, if you could um, put onto Facebook your finished work, we'd love to see it finished. Sure, sure, sure. I'll just. I'll give you an idea of what I'm going to do uh, in two minutes, and I'll I'll put the finished painting on FB. You've been so accommodating in answering questions. Sanjay, if somebody wanted to be your new best friend, how would they get a hold of you? <laughs> <laughs> so this is. This is the water body, and I'm not going to finish it off. I'm going to put it a little bit like this. And uh, so basically, Right, and then I'm going to integrate this. And then so there is some some disturbance here so that To balance that, I will have some So here also I can I can show you I can very nicely I can do water here. Right. There are some steps here. And some so is it okay or you want me to finish in another 10 minutes or I can or I can I post it with, uh, on FB. Yeah, posting on Facebook would be fantastic. Okay, that way I'll do it. Okay. Sanjay, before you finish, could you uh, show us your reference photo one more time, please? How do I show it? Okay, I, I can remove this. No, I don't. Need. So there is a lot of detailing I could do, but I. Running out, of time. running out of time. So I would, I would have, I would push this blue. I, I think this is very nice. This blue is being balanced by this blue. Yeah. Even though we are not made this wall blue, I'll, I'll just push the blue here, 
and i will add the reflection of the reflection of the this door and basically it doesn't have to be around the object these vertical lines that are cutting across the land sky and the water are important and they will work for example if i do simple lines like that they will integrate the they will integrate the top and the bottom otherwise i don't want it to look like two paintings uh, horizontally you know stuck together it's a nice photo but uh, the painting is very masterful the way you make marks with pigment and water yeah thank you okay thank you for joining us today Thank you, everybody. My pleasure, John. I look forward to seeing you again in India or in, uh, or in, or in Italy at the Fabriano show. I don't know whether I'll be going to Fabriano. Uh, I don't know because of the travel situation, but I'm going to be traveling a lot in India uh, if the government permits over the next uh, three, four months. A lot of workshops and exhibitions and paintings and everything. Well, you're wonderful. Thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you, everybody, for joining. It was good to see all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Angela, Giovanni. Ciao, 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 ciao. Thanks, Sanjay. Thank you, Ethel, for everything. Thank